Hello all, and welcome back to another episode of Containers from the Couch. I am Chris Short, a senior developer advocate. Thank you, Psy, who just fixed the background for me. Senior developer advocate at AWS here. I am joined by Jonah Jones, Lewis Diamond, and Lee Chun Lee. I'm going to talk about some of the curated packages we have set up for EKS Anywhere. If you were watching the previous session, a lot of info about EKS Anywhere. Uh, I know it's a lot to digest, but here's some more. Uh, so Lee Chun or Jonah, I forget which one of them was starting, but feel free, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, my name is Lee Chun Lee. I'm a product manager for EKS Anywhere, and I have my teammates, uh, Luis and Jonah, joining me today. Luis and Jonah, would you guys like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm Luis Diamond. I'm a senior SD on EKS Anywhere. Uh, specifically working on packages, which is something that we're going to be showing you today. Awesome. Hey, um, yeah, I'm Jonah Jones. I'm a SDE on the EKS Anywhere Packages team as well. Hey, thanks, guys. Um, so today, we're going to be telling you more about this new feature we're launching in public preview called um, EKS Anywhere Curated Packages. Yes, Chris. You, you I was going to say, like, what is a curated package exactly, right? Like, and what is significant about EKS curated packages? Yes. Um, so we have been um, hearing from customers that in order to, you know, run and operate a production grade Kubernetes or EKS anywhere clusters on premise, they usually have to install more operational software that is critical to run the production grade cluster in addition to what we already released today. So these can include software like a um, ingress controller, service type load balancer. Um, also, there are some of these services that is um, there is no equivalent AWS service on prem uh, as of now. So but customers still need them, such as like a container registry. And that's why we are introducing curated packages, starting from a few, but we will add more over time to help customer um, operate production grade cluster on premise. Um, the key, though, is that all of the package that we will release under this feature is going to be tested and um, security scanned and supported fully by AWS. And so I think that would take away a lot of the time and effort customer perhaps today have to spend on you know, tracking updates on their own, doing compatibility testing on their own. And we may even be able to help them save, the, save some money from uh, reducing the uh, support contracts they have to sign. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be gained by curated packages, and it's it's really cool to see. What are we? I mean, are we announcing what we're starting off with yet? I forget. Like, yeah, the and now kind of thing always gets <laughs> fuzzy in my head sometimes. Right. <laughs> um, this is the first time um, we are releasing the feature, so we're right now in public preview, and I'm going to talk about more of what is in the public preview, and my teammates here are going to give everyone a demo. Beautiful. That sounds awesome. Who's giving the demo, y'all? Not me. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Jonah. That's going to be nice. Lewis. Point. Yeah. All right. Um, and so, uh, Chris, if you don't mind, let's put up, I have some slides to show just yep. to, you know, give everyone a background uh, from a conceptual level, what we are introducing. So before I go to the next slide, I want to let you know that we do also have Binyam, our engineering manager who is going to be answering question um, on the chats. And on the right of the slide, you can see his ID. So that's, you know, someone from AWS. <laughs> um, now, before I jump into talking more about curated packages, let's do a quick recap of EKS Anywhere. I'm sure that uh, you guys have heard a lot in the last session about you know, the use case of EKS Anywhere. What exactly is EKS Anywhere? Especially, what's the difference between that and EKS Distro and EKS in the cloud? So EKS Distro, as you um, probably have heard from Vipin in the last session, it is a Kubernetes distribution, but it is the one that AWS provide testing and the one that we use for 
all EKS deployment options so that you can be confident, you know, regardless which deployment options they're using, the versions of the components are the same. Now, EKS Anywhere is not just a distribution. It's actually the tools that we give you on top of the distribution. So we, for example, give you tools um, to help you bootstrap the cluster. We design the right flow. We build the automation so that you don't have to. And that's what you will not get by simply using a vanilla distribution. And we have, in addition to these lifecycle management tools, um, today already bundle a couple more components, such as the CNI or the Flux GitOps operator. Since then, we definitely have heard you know, a lot more um, requests on more integration. And I have mentioned a couple in the beginning of this talk, um, such as you know, uh, more, more networking components, ingress and, and load balancer. And as well as there are things that are not available uh, in terms of AWS services equivalent on-prem. And so we're launching three packages in um, May and slash June timeframe. Uh, the first one that we are providing to customer would be a hardware package that serves as your local registry and as well as emissary ingress as the ingress controller. Um, we're going to also give you service type LB capability through Metal LB. Now, those three are the integrations we would be um, releasing over time in this and next month. And then for the rest of this year, we will also add uh, auto scaling capability, starting with a um, auto scaler package, and we'll then look into monitoring and certificate management. These are um, a lot of integrations that we're offering for on-premise and even disconnected situation. We will start to add more integration that is allowing you to consume the equivalent of these capabilities from AWS and will give you a out of box hybrid experience when you need to use the corresponding AWS services. Now we have heard a lot more um, integration requests in the past. So just want to let you all know that we will look into a lot more area after this year as we gather more customer demands. Now, this how a, are we? Yes, Chris. I was just going to say the the first three we chose was just a great selection of tooling, right? Like yeah. it's it's opinionated, yes, but those are great tools, right? <laughs> like by those themselves, are, they are great tools. Those are what we have heard um, from customer as uh, very important to add from the beginning too. And so the way uh, we prioritize which area to look on is definitely based on what we hear from customers. Um, so how how are we going? to give these integrations to customers. The way we will be giving you is through this, this curated package feature. And here I'm going to show you with the, this diagram, you know, what are the specific components we're releasing. So for some of you who are familiar with um, the EKS Anywhere latest release, you probably would know that we have um, already augmented our architecture into suggesting you to have a, a long lift local management cluster that essentially serve as a local fleet control plane where you can deploy a lot of central manageability capabilities and then from there deploy additional EKS Anywhere workload clusters. What kind of central manageability capability do I mean? So curated package is a good example. One thing that we will be um, releasing through the public preview is a package controller. And this package controller is going to source the AWS signed and AWS built um, images of these packages from ECR. And package, package controller will be the one that you could use to deploy these package either on the management cluster or on subsequent workload cluster. Some of the package would be appropriate to just be deployed everywhere, right? For example, the networking packages, LBs and ingress would run everywhere, but some of them are actually appropriate to have the management cluster be the central um, location to host it. Local registry would be one. So we give you Harbor, for example, put it on management cluster and with the images there, you can then subsequently 
um, deploy your workload clusters or your applications. Um, now, one thing I want to just reemphasize, like Harbor or Emissary Ingress, these are just open source projects. Well, what's the big deal that we release these? The key value proposition here really is we, as in, you know, Amazon, is the one that is going to build these projects from source. Um, we will continuously do compatibility testing, make sure that each of these package we will release for you are going to work with a version of the Kubernetes or the, the rest of the EKS Anywhere toolchain versions we are releasing the package with. And so that you don't have to do all any of these compatibility testing. And we would do all the security scanning and continuous remediation for that. And lastly, most importantly, you can call AWS support to get help for any of these packages um, as long as you have the EKS Anywhere subscription. So with that, I think it's demo time and we can switch to Louis' screen. Oh, whoops. I'll let you do it, Sai. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Here Let's we go. Let's get started. So we're going to be demoing um, EKSA packages. And of course, the first thing you want to do is have a, an EKS Anywhere cluster. And this creation process does not differ um, if you need uh, packages. So we're speeding this up here. But once you have your cluster created, uh, you will need to export this environment variable because this is still under a feature flag. And in order to use that feature, you need that environment variable for EKS control. So this command here will install the EKS Anywhere package controller. And once you run that, you can uh, essentially list your pods and you will see that there's an EKS Anywhere controller they're running. With that in place, um, you can now use EKS Control Anywhere list packages in order to figure out what you can install. So here we're using source registry, which means it's going to fetch from ECR the current list of available packages. For our initial release, we only have two packages. Uh, the first one is essentially a test application and the second one's Harbor. Uh, you are probably familiar with it. And let's first look at uh, what is a package bundle. So the, the way we're managing um, our packages is using a rolling release approach. So for every release, we're gonna provide a bundle which has a list of all the available packages. Here you can see that there's MSR ingress. So this is something we're gonna be showing today. Um, and th this is still in, th this is a developer um, package bundle. So a development build. This is not available today, but this is something that's coming in the future. Um, and as you can see at the top here, there's a signature um, field. And that means that this package is actually cryptographically signed for um, authenticity. So we we validate that this bundle was not tampered with before applying it. So here, as you can see, I'm modifying the SHA-256 digest of one of those packages. And if I try to apply this, the controller is going to tell me that this is an invalid bundle because the signature is incorrect. Hey, Lewis. Yep. So where does the signature come from? And, and what is actually doing the validation for us? Maybe that'd be good to touch on real fast. Yeah, so um, our release pipeline is essentially going to sign any bundle that we produce. And when this is applied to the cluster, the controller will validate that signature against AWS's public key um, before allowing that resource to get in the cluster. So you're always sure that what you're installing is the builds coming from the EKS Anywhere team. Gotcha. And if we sign that bundle file, how do we know that the Helm chart is secure? Well, everything that's in that bundle um, is referenced by SHA-256 Helm. So anything that you install based on it 
um, will also be valid against that signature. So here, uh, we're actually applying a different bundle. This bundle is effectively the same as the one I showed before, except that it's not, it has not been modified. So this one is valid for this signature. And once the, um, when the, bun once the bundle itself is in the cluster, uh, what we do next is we run EKS control anywhere upgrade. So that's essentially moving the the cluster to the next release or the release 12133 in this case and that makes the packages part of that release available for installation so if we look here we're listing the packages but we're using source cluster so that means it's going to fetch what is available from the cluster itself and in this case we can see emissary ingress has been added so now that emissary ingress is available we can generate a package file and we'll generate it for the LOEKS Anywhere um, package for, for now. As you can see, this generated a simple YAML file. Uh, essentially lets you name your, your application and it references the package that you want to install. Right, so we'll go ahead and apply that package. And what this will do is essentially just deploy um, the application. Right, so right away we have our Hello EKS Anywhere pod that is running. And this application also comes with a service. So that's something else that's coming in the future. Uh, we're gonna be enabling virtual IPs for services of type load balancer. And in this case, uh, we're using BGP. Uh, so 10.220.0.90 will become routable and we can actually curl that IP and we see the output for that specific package. Nice. All right, so our next step here is we're going to be deleting that service because we're, we want to demo emissary and um, we're going to be going through emissary for, for that deployment. So we don't need that load balancer service and we're going to be generating a package. We use source cluster again because this is a development build and it's only available on our, on our cluster and we're generating a package called uh, emissary ingress. So you can modify the package. And one thing that you can do here is set the target namespace. So in our case, we want this de deployed in the emissary namespace. So we'll create that namespace. And once created, we can go ahead and apply that package. And again, it's going to be installed automatically. Ta-da. <laughs> and there we go so puzzles are not yet ready but they're coming up quickly so that applied it to all the nodes in the cluster correct so this uh or the specific the, the specific one is deployed on multiple nodes but yeah. yeah it's going to depend on which package that you're installing mm -hmm. um and yeah, so th this comes with a load balancer service. And again, we're getting an external IP from that same VIP provider. Um, since we deleted the previous one, we get the same IP here. So once we got emissary ready, uh, we deploy the necessary resources for serving HTTP and HTTPS. And we're going to be routing to our Hello EKS Anywhere service. All right, so now that we have all of our routes ready, we can actually hit that service using our domain name. 
Uh, but normally you want to be using a secure connection, so HTTPS. And to do that, we're going to be using uh, Cert Manager. Cert Manager comes pre-installed uh, in EKS anywhere, so that's what we're going to be using. Uh, we first create our issuer. And then create certificates. And those certificates will be um, will effectively generate a secret which has a TLS certificate. And once that's done, we can turn TLS on for that deployment and curl using HTTPS. And we get our expected awesome. output. All right, so the next. The, the next package that we're going to be showing here is Harbor. And Harbor is a bit more complex. Uh, we have a bit more configuration that we can add. So we have this config field here, uh, which allows us to customize that deployment according to our infrastructure. Uh, in, in this case, uh, we'll be serving over harbor.eksademo.xyz. Uh, and we're exposing this as a cluster IP service with TLS disabled because emissary will take care of exposing that service to the outside and it will do TLS termination. Hey, Lewis, are these config values documented anywhere? Um... Yes, all, all of that is available in our online documentation. Okay, awesome. So we apply this package and the controller will go ahead and install all the required resources. And as you can see, this is installing right now. Harbor takes, takes a bit longer to deploy. Um, so skipping forward here and Harbor is now up and running. Now we'll do essentially the same thing as we did before. So we have a cluster IP service here and we'll generate the We'll apply the correct emissary resources to route to our harbor de deployment. Same for certificate. And once that's ready, we enable TLS. And there we go. So now we can go to our browser log in to through our, our URL using the uh, default credentials. And we're going to be creating a registry here that will effectively proxy to ECR. So we're use, using public.ecr.aws. And we're set for this. We go to project. So it comes by default with a public project called library. Uh, we'll create a new one for that ECR proxy and we'll call it ACR, uh, make this public, proxy cache to ACR, and yeah, that's all we need to do. Back to our shell. Uh, we'll try to pull from that very project, that ECR proxy. We're, we're going to pull Amazon Linux here. And as you can see, it's going through a, well, you can't really see it, but it's going through a TLS connection. Uh, so what exactly did just happen there? Or... Well, we we actually just pulled Amazon Linux through our Harbor deployment, which proxies to ECR. So it's now cached locally. Exactly. So it's it's Perfect. cached locally. You can uh, you can pull the same image from any of your deployments, and it's just gonna gotcha. effectively hit your um, your Harbor deployment. So I could point a local pod to use that Harbor link instead of. Something yep. else that it would pull. Okay. Exactly. So you could, for example, have your Harbor deployment uh, connected to ECR, but all the rest of your internal um, clusters not connected to the internet, for example. That's awesome. Uh, so the this, next. I mean, this is doing... this is huge for folks that are like trying to do air gapped or just yes. you know not directly connected. Yeah, or partially air gapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So now what we're doing here is just tagging that same image because we're going to be testing 
pushing to the library project that came uh, installed by default. And logging in with the admin credentials, we can see that we can now push to that library Amazon Linux um, registry. And yeah, everything works as expected. Cool. Yeah, that's all it, for the demo. It's nice when demos work. <laughs> yes, especially when they're recorded. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no way we can do this live because yeah, you know, cluster no, creation and yeah. harbor are going up. Mm -hmm. That takes like five minutes. So, yeah. Awesome. So, folks, if you have any questions or any feedback or anything like that about EKSA from the earlier conversation we had uh, on the previous stream, I uh, just want to remind folks to go ahead and send an email to the team. And if you have some feedback or you need a certain feature, you know, to adopt EKS anywhere on your own on-premises instances, feel free to let us know, right? Like we take your feedback into consideration when it comes to beating, building up these packages. Lee John, is there anything else you want to add to this or? No, nope. uh, we are happy to answer questions here or through the emails. Awesome. Fantastic. And, you know, when in doubt, you can always find me at Chris Short. I can get you directed to the right person here internally. Jonah's got his, uh, I'm assuming that's a Twitter, maybe a GitHub. Who knows? Uh, um, that's my Twitter, know. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so don't, don't hesitate to reach out to us for help. We're here. You know, these curated packages are going to be coming pretty hot and heavy, too. So, yeah, like, like Justin just said in chat, I'm going to KubeCon. I don't know. Any, is anyone else here going to KubeCon next week? I am. Yeah. Sweet. So I'll yep. get to meet you all there because I have yet yeah. to go to an Amazon in-person event yet. Uh, <laughs> so it'll be great to see you all there. And uh, up next, we've got Liz Rice and Duffy Cooley. Uh, yeah. Can I, can I do a quick plug for our Absolutely. Group, Please do. Yeah. So um, if you have a minute, if you go over there and star. Um, so this is the... Uh, repo for the demo that Lewis just showed you. Wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you. So yeah, like grab that, kick the tires on it, see what you think. If you need EKS anywhere, I've got that link right here. You can go grab that. And oh, come on, send. There we go. And you'll be off and running on your own with your own curated packages and having your own Images stored locally is a perfectly good policy to have just to save on, you know, your, what's it called? 95th percentile for your data center or whatever. Um, awesome. Awesome work team. This was really great. I'm, I'm excited about the future of all of these because it's going to add a lot of value for customers, make things much easier to use for customers, especially when it comes to on-prem. So without uh, further ado, Thank you all very much for coming on and sharing this with us. And we will be right back here in just a minute.